Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Bradburn from toptipbio.com and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to use GraphPad to create an XY and column scatter plot. So why are scatter plots useful? When making an XY graph, column graph or grouped graph, you don't have to plot error bars. Instead, you can graph each data point or replicate. And this is often the best way to display variation as it shows your data exactly. With modest amounts of replicates, it's almost always better to show all of the replicates on the graph. Within Prism, there are three ways you can create a scatter plot. There's an XY scatter plot. So if you want to plot two or more data sets of continuous data, then it's best to select an XY scatter plot. So each X value can have several replicates for every data set. And when you make your graph, you can choose to show all the replicates on your graph instead of error bars. Start with an XY table if you want to show all of your replicates for each X value. Shortly in this video tutorial, I will show you how I created this particular graph. Another type of scatter plot is the column scatter plot. So if you want to compare groups and show every data point, then start with a column table. Later on in this video tutorial, I will show you how I created this graph. The third and final option for a scatter plot in GraphPad is a grouped scatter plot. So if you want to create a scatter plot comparing groups by more than one variable, then enter data on a group data table with side by side replicates. So let's start by making an XY scatter plot within Prism. What I'm going to do is select the XY table in graph. I'm going to enter or import data into a new table. My X values are going to be numbers and my Y values, I'm going to enter two replicate values in side by side subcolumns. And then I'm going to click the create button. Then I'm going to paste in the data that I have prepared earlier. So this data is from an experiment where the X values are time in hours and the Y values are a response value. There are two sets of response values, treated and then controls, and each response reading was recorded in duplicate. So there was two replicates. So since we have entered data into our table, the graph sheet is now available. So if you click on the connected graph sheet in the left hand window to open up the graph wizard, when you are ensure that the XY graph family is selected, and there are a few options that you can select for a scatter plot. The first is points with error bars. So this is plotting summary data onto the scatter plot. And in this case, it is the mean with standard deviation. A variation of this is the points and connecting lines with error bars, which is the same as the first option, just with connecting lines. The third one is the one that we're going to be interested in, which is individual replicates. So this is where all of the data points are plotted onto the graph. So underneath in the drop down menu, there are two options where you can present your replicates, either aligned or staggered. So aligned plots each replicate on their exact X value, as shown below. By choosing staggered, GraphPad will then separate any data points that are very close together, so you can see each individual data point. And I always advise picking staggered if your data points are very close together. So I'm going to select this option to start with and then click the OK button to take me to the graph. So as with any graph when you first start, you may wish to change the colors of the graph. And the easiest way to do this is by using the Change Colors button at the top. And this option is explored in more detail in a separate quick tip video tutorial. But I'm not going to click this option. Instead, I'm going to fine tune the appearance of the graph by going to the Format Graph button at the top to open up the format graph window. So it is here where you can change the appearance of the scatter plot itself by changing the appearance of the symbols, for example, as well as the error bars if they've been plotted. So at the top, I have my treated group selected. So what I'm going to do is edit my treated and then my control group separately. If I wanted to edit them at the same time, you want to change the global appearance of your graph. And this option is explored in more detail in a separate quick tip video tutorial. But for now, I'm gonna leave treated selected. And then under the style header, you can again change the appearance of your scatter plot by using this drop down here, where you can choose to select and plot summary data with error bars. For example, the mean, the geometric mean and the median. But I'm going to leave my option selected as each replicate. And then again, you can either show to plot your replicates as aligned or staggered. 
underneath is the settings that you're probably most interested in. So this is changing the color of the symbols, their shape and size. So for the treated group, I'm going to change the symbol color. And what I want to do is give this group a beige color. Now a good thing about GraphPad is that you can introduce slightly transparent colors. And this is useful if data points are overlapping or very close together. So it gives a depth to your graph so you can actually see what are behind each data point. So I'm going to apply slightly transparent beige color to my treated group. I'm going to click the apply button to preview my changes. So you'll notice now on the graph any circles which are the treated group that are overlapping with the squares which are the controls you will now see that you can see both of these groups when they overlap. Another tip when you want to separate points that are very closely aligned is you can reduce the size of your symbols for example four to three and click apply. By reducing the symbol size you can then separate out these points a little bit more. And if you so wish, you can change the shape of the symbol. But I'm going to leave this as a circle. Now what I'm going to do is just toggle to my control group and do a similar thing where I'm going to change the color of my control group to be, again, a slightly transparent purple in this instance. And what I'm then going to do is change the shape from a square to a triangle, and reduce the size to three. Click apply. So changing the symbols is probably the main options that you're going to wish to change in a scatter plot. You can also choose to show bars, spikes and drop lines. So this option will include a vertical bar or drop line which will drop from the data point to the x-axis. And this provides a means of creating a bar chart for example with bars at specific positions along the x-axis instead of being evenly spaced. However, for this option, I'm not going to select to show bars, spikes, and drop lines. If you had summary data plotted onto your scatter plot, you can edit the error bars in terms of their color, the direction of the error bars, and as well as their style and thickness. If you had a connecting line, for example, if you had a line graph, you can then choose to edit these settings here. So line graphs are discussed in more detail in a separate video tutorial. Underneath this, there's also the option to show an area fill. So this will fill the area under the symbols. This is usually applicable for area graphs and area graphs are discussed in more detail in a separate video tutorial. Finally, at the bottom, you can choose to plot right Y axes as well as a left Y axes. So if your groups are measured on different scales, it's always useful to plot another axes to show the other scale. The show figure legend is ticked in this case because as with scatter plots, the data is plotted by symbols. So you need to tell the reader what each symbol represents. And I'm fairly happy with this graph now. So I'm going to click the OK button to return back to the graph. And as you can see, the figure legend is on the right hand side. It's quite far away at the minute from the graph. So what I'm going to do is click and highlight my figure legend and just drag this onto the graph itself, just filling up this white space a bit more. And then to finish off, you can give your graph a title. So I'm going to call this XY Scatterplot. You can also do the same for your x-axis and y-axis titles. As you can see at the minute, the y-axis has not been given a title. So I'm going to click on this and call this response. And then that finishes off the xy scatter plot. Let's now go ahead and create a column scatter plot. So what I'm going to do in the left-hand window is create a new data table. And then for this, I'm going to select column. And then I'm going to enter or import data into a new table and then enter replicate values stacked into columns and create. Again, like the previous video, I'm just going to paste in the data I've prepared earlier. And this data is from an experiment where there are control and treated groups where the values are recorded and some activity value is measured. And each replicate is now stacked into each column. So in other words, there are 22 measures in each group or 22 replicates. So to begin creating the column scatter plot, I'm now going to click on connected graph sheet in the left hand window. Again opening the graph wizard. With the column graph family selected you want to click the individual values tab and then what we are interested in is this first option called scatter plot. And then underneath there's a drop down where you can choose to select what is plotted. So here you can plot as in the first video no lines or error bars so only the replicate values will be plotted. If you have large amounts of data, you may wish then to plot additional information onto the graph. For example, the mean or the mean with error bars. For example, the standard deviation. 
the standard error of the mean, or the 95% confidence intervals, as well as the range. And you can do a similar thing for the geometric mean, as well as the median. For this particular example, I'm going to plot the mean with standard deviation as well. Now notice that there are a set of lines that have been introduced onto the graph, and I'll explain what these lines are in more detail in a few moments time. So I'm just going to click the OK button to be taken to the graph. So here is our scatter plot. And if you look at the control group, you can see each replicate value has been plotted. And then there is also the summary of data. So the midline in this example is the mean value. And then the bar that protrudes from the top will be the standard deviation above the mean. The bar at the bottom will be the standard deviation below the mean. There's also this plotted for the treated group, but because the data points are so compact and closely aligned, it's actually hard to visualize this summary data. So what I'm going to do now is just change the appearance of this graph so it's a bit more suitably presented. So again, I'm just going to go and take you to the format graph window. And this is a bit different to the previous format graph window that you'd seen in the XY scatter plot. So here you can choose to alter your line or your summary data that has been plotted. The bars option is not ticked, but if you click the bars option, this will plot a bar graph instead of lines for your summary data and you can change the appearance here. Again what you're probably most interested in with this being a scatter plot is changing the symbols. So changing the symbol colour, shape and size. The control group here I'm just going to again apply a slightly transparent colour and I'm going to give the colour a slightly transparent blue in this instance. I'm going to reduce the size of my symbols from 4 to 3. I'm going to change the symbol of the control group to be a square. And for the error bars themselves, I'm going to change this to be a black color. So the error bars in this instance are the standard deviation. And as well as changing the color, you can change the style as well as the direction. So you can choose to plot them above, below, or both. I always advise plotting in both directions. And then you can also change the thickness. In terms of the line, this would be the midline. So in this example, it's the mean. And I'm just going to leave the color again as black. At the right hand side of this, I just want to draw your attention to the line and error go options. So this is where you can either plot them to be underneath your data points or replicates or on top of your replicates. So I'm going to, in this example, choose to show them on top of the replicates. And then for the length of the line, this depicts the length of the midline. So the mean value in this instance. So you can choose to have an extra long line, a long line, a medium line, or a short line. I always advise sticking with a long line compared to a medium line because you want to differentiate the mean value from the error bars, for example. So I'm just going to click the apply button to preview my changes. So notice now this looks a lot better than it did. So we can now differentiate between the individual data points and that summary data. Then I'm going to toggle to my treated group and then alter the changes here as well. So for this group I'm going to change the colour of my symbols to be a slightly transparent purple. I'm going to change the symbol shape to be a triangle and reduce the size to 3. For the error bars I'm going to leave as a solid black colour and again I'm going to change where the line and error go so I'm going to plot them to be on top and then I'm going to click the apply button. Then at the very bottom under additional options, you have the options, as I mentioned previously, to plot an additional y-axis or a figure legend, for example. In this particular example, I wouldn't advise showing a figure legend simply because you can see that the group names are actually plotted underneath each plot. So it wouldn't be sensible to plot a figure legend in this example. So I'm happy with this and I'm going to click the OK button to return back to the graph. So again, let's start off by giving the graph a title. So I'm going to call this column scatter plot. And we're also going to delete my X title because I don't really need that now. And again, I'm going to give a Y title for my axes and I'm just going to call this response again. Another useful feature I want to draw your attention to before I finish the tutorial is the ability to change the appearance of individual data points or replicates within PRISM. So the useful thing in PRISM is, let's say for example this data point way up here in the control group has been identified as an outlier. And what we want to do is actually change the appearance of this point to tell the reader that this is an outlier. 
To change the appearance of an individual data point, simply right click on the point on the graph and then under format this point, you can then change the symbol color, the symbol shape and the symbol size. And this will only change the appearance for that individual data point. So for example, let's change the symbol color to be a red color. So now notice that just that data point is red compared to the others in the control group, which are blue. And then let's also go ahead and change the symbol shape. And what we'll do is we'll just give this a circle shape. And in the document in the figure legend underneath this figure, you could state that the red circle indicates an outlier, for example. So that's just one way that you can change the appearance of individual data points within Prism. So that wraps up the video tutorial for the scatter plots. And specifically in this tutorial, you've learned about plotting scatter graphs in Prism, and you also know how to interpret and create an X, Y and column scatter graph. So scatter graphs are great when you have modest amounts of data points to easily visualize them all on the same plot. And this provides a lot more information to the reader instead of just plotting summary data such as bar graphs.